Welcome back. For over 37 years, the Legal Outreach is a not-for-profit college prep and legal education program for middle and high school students from underserved communities right here in New York City. The program's goal is to motivate them to pursue professional careers, prepare them for admission to selective colleges, and instill in them the values needed, as well as the disciplines that will lead to their ultimate success. Sharing now more about their program is the Senior VP and Managing Director of Programs at Legal Outreach, Tamika Edwards. And Tamika, glad to have you here with us on the Social Justice Forums. Thank you, Darren. Good to be here and happy to, to share today. Yeah, and so, you know, part of what we do here is try to promote what we talk about, civic engagement. And I know really one of the core components of your program is really helping young people to be able to develop in that area. So for someone who doesn't know a little bit more about Legal Outreach, bring us home. Yeah, so Legal Outreach is a college preparatory organization. Um, we are 37 years old. Uh, 38 years old now, and it was founded in um, 1983 by our executive director, James O'Neill, who at the time was just disturbed by the lack of representation of African American and Latinx attorneys within the, the legal profession. And he thought the best way to address um, this was by using the law to effectuate change in the lives of young people in underserved communities. Um, so, you know, we started off in the middle schools, really just training teachers to teach the law, and students really loved the program. Um, we had a focus on skill building, building student skills well at the high school level and matriculate to top colleges and um, ultimately be uh, professionals, um, you know, after college and be successful professionals. Um, so, you know, one of the goals of our program is to just level the educational playing field for minority, low income and first generation students. And we do that through 13 different programs that we run after school on Saturdays and every summer of a student's high school career at legal outreach and primarily through what we call our college bound program. Um, so we have several programs. We have a Saturday Writing uh, Academy. We have an SAT prep program. We have a life skills program, a debate program, an academic advisory program, college access program. All of these programs uh, work together to help students build those academic skills that would help them to succeed in high school and ultimately matriculate to, to top colleges. And when we talk about our young people, obviously, we know getting them engaged at, the early, at, at an early age is really important and imperative. Uh, what are you finding by way of interest in this area? Because when we talk about the legal field, when we talk about really the criminal justice system, these are things that are highly impacting youth. And it's glad and it's a good thing to see on some sense students who say, listen, you know, people want to be a part of these programs that are really going to change the lives and hopefully the course of community. Yeah, so we're finding that um, our students are really interested in, in the law, right? And we are not really concerned about whether they want to become lawyers or not. We use the law as a tool to attract them and to inspire them and motivate them. Um, but ultimately we're, we're, and secretly, we're building, helping them to build the skills. So, you know, what we realize is that there are gaps that exist within underserved communities. And these gaps often hinder students from these communities from succeeding. So, you know, some of those gaps that we're seeing um, are the outlook gap. We, you know, we seek to give young people who are not exposed um, just an opportunity to be exposed to what's out there, the, the different professions um, that they might not know about. Um, so that when they are um, in college or even in high school and when they graduate, they can start think, thinking about what those different options are career-wise. We recognize that there is an achievement gap. Um, so we have our programs that are designed to help 
students build key skills so that they can gain admission to top colleges. And we realize that there's a college matching gap. Um, so we help to guide students and their families toward uh, applying to colleges that are the best fit for them given their performance in high school. Um, so we, we find that students are interested in, in how we hook them. Um, and when they join the program, they find community, they find support, um, you know, they're, they're connected with like-minded students from all across the city. We recruit from um, all of the boroughs. Uh, we don't really have a whole lot of students from Staten Island in our program, but we do have a few. But um, you know, we, we, we seek to gather um, students who need our support and who need our guidance and who need the skills. And um, hopefully if they trust us, they trust the, the, the process and we partner with their families, they're successful and they're able to not just gain admission to a top college, but they're able to compete with um, their peers who probably um, had a head start. You know, these are, these are other students who have been um, college focused and they've been prepared, been preparing for college since, you know, the second and third grade. And we're working with students in our own communities where the resources are, are limited um, within the schools, within their homes, and they're able to compete with their counterparts on that level. So we're really proud of that. Yeah, uh, we're living in a time right now where social justice is at an all time high and certainly with racial tensions and the challenge of voting rights and things of that nature. We know that people are taking to the streets and really becoming more and more engaged. Uh, social justice is the name of our show, right? So. Uh, and so Kitty, give us a little insight as to what that program is about and how that works. Yeah, so our, we're really proud of our, our newest program, which is called the Civic Engagement and Social Justice Council. And, um, you know, it's our newest program. It's a student-led program, and it was formed just as a response to the murder of George Floyd. Um, students were moved to organize, and we had a, a forum, and all of our students you know, express how they were feeling and the frustrations um, that they had, and they wanted to do something about it. And so they were moved to organize and do something about the injustices that they were not only seeing in, in the media, but also seeing and experiencing in their schools and their communities. Um, so they decided to get together um, and each year choose issues that they see as the most pressing in their communities and launch campaigns to address these concerns. So this year, um, our students or our council decided that they would um, take on three different projects. Um, the first project uh, concerns um, making a police use of force lesson that we created um, available to their, their schools, their middle and their high schools. And the purpose would be to, to teach students what constitutes reasonable force according to the constitution. Um, so we're offering training to teachers to teach their students as well as we're sending um, our attorneys into the, the classrooms to teach these lessons to, to middle and high schoolers. And, and we want students to know about their rights and their responsibilities. And um, they also want students to know what best practices are for um, if they find themselves in a situation where unreasonable force is used. Um, the second project that they're working um, on, it concerns policing of students of color in the subway. Um, particularly uh, with regard to the hopping of turnstiles. So the student, the, the council saw that Black and Latinx students were uh, disproportionately fined um, for hop their, their hopping the turnstiles. And the reality is that in, in most instances, the, the three swipe limit that students have on their Metro card for um, school related activities and to travel to and from schools was just not enough 
for um, students to participate, particularly in after school programs. So we had students um, that were being penalized for simply trying to be a part of an after school or a weekend activity. And this hit home for our students because um, the majority of them commute from their, their schools to the legal outreach office. Um, and they're in the Bronx, they're in Brooklyn, they're in Manhattan. Um, they're also in you know, the, the Southern part of Queens, which is not where we're located. And in order to participate in our after school and our weekend programming, um, some of them exceed the, the three swipe limit. Um, so that was the second project. And the third project that they're working on concerns voter registration. You mentioned that earlier and um, particularly as it concerns voter registration, registration or, or pre-registration for 16 and 17 year olds. Um, so this, the council thought that by bringing awareness to the younger population and making voter registration, pre-registration forms just more accessible within the schools, more accessible to students, um, they're convinced that they can do their part to um, combat low registration and turnout rates among um, racial minorities. Yeah, I know one of the things that, you know, programs actually do is really try to prepare youth for not just the present, but the future. Just in our last segment, we talked uh, with an uh, officer in charge who actually is the president of SUNY Potsdam uh, about the transition into college life. And I know in your organization, you do the same thing, really making sure the kids uh, have access and preparing for being college bound. So uh, a little bit more about what you guys do in the area of college readiness. Yeah. So, um, yeah, as, I, as I mentioned earlier, Legal Outreach has 13 different programs that we run um, uh, after school on Saturdays and every summer of their high school um, career. And they're designed to accomplish different objectives, three different objectives. One is to motivate students to want to go to college. And once they're motivated, the second objective is to equip them with the academic skills to do so. Um, the third objective is to prepare students to succeed while once they are actually admitted. Um, ultimately, we want our alumni to graduate from college prepared to pursue professional careers. And so um, we have a set of programs that's designed to motivate students by exposing them to the different career options. And so we have a summer internship program that students participate in once they've completed their first year with us successfully. And they're placed at um, law firms, private law firms, public interest firms. Um, they work with alongside judges. They work with at, at real estate firms. And we just want students to see where they could potentially be and they actually you know, go work at different placements every week. They rotate to different placements, but we spend time debriefing with them to um, you know, help them to vision cast. So they, they talk about what they, they observed at the firms and what they need to do now in order to make it there. And so that vision is really, really important and key to um, getting them on the road to college um, preparation. Um, in our second set of programs, we have um, programs that are designed to close that achievement gap. And so we want to, to help students enhance their academic skills um, so that they're prepared to gain admission to, to college. And so we um, want to, students to you know, increase their GPAs and to make sure that they have the tools to know how to study effectively, not just now, but that, that they're um, developing good habits that can translate into um, strong grades once they get to college. And so we have an SAT prep program. We have um, an academic advisory program. So where there's some accountability, even as students are going through high school, we're talking to them about study skills. So they're developing those good habits now. Um, we have a writing program so that students can learn not just good thinkers and, and um, good presenters, but they can put 
their their thoughts to paper and it can be you know a cogent paper and a well thought out and well written paper and then um, talking about transition to, to college we have a whole college access department and we focus on um, how to um, help students navigate their way through um, the high school to um, to college transition and so we have lots of workshops with the students and with their families to help them to transition successfully or even anticipate what they might um, you know experience particularly that first year in in college and all of these programs that we have all 13 of our programs in our view are necessary to to um, alter the educational trajectory of students from underserved communities. And we're really proud to say that, you know, we've been really successful, um, not that we have been successful, but the students have been successful. And, um, and that's evidenced by how well they've done once they, they uh, matriculate to these schools. So we know that high school graduation is just not enough. College, uh, graduation is, is a must for our college bound um, students. And, and that's where we think we, we have been able, they've been able to excel. So the evidence of our success is really in the numbers. And um, we're proud to say that 100% of our students have graduated on time, graduated from high school, and 99% um, of our students have matriculated to to college and over 75% of our students have matriculated to um, what Barron's calls the, the nation's um, most highly and very competitive colleges. And um, students just from this past year's graduating class have matriculated to you know, notable institutions like um, Cornell and, and Columbia and and Harvard and Hamilton and SUNY Binghamton and, and Hunter. Um, but what we're most proud of, as I said earlier, is that our student, students are able to compete when they get to these institutions. And so just looking at our graduating class, we see that an overwhelming majority of our students um, start their college career off with um, a GPA of 3.0 uh, or higher. Um, and, and that's really something to be, um, you know, that's notable for us because it's significantly higher than the national college graduation rate and, and the national average of, of how first year students um, fare, you know, in college, especially from black and brown communities. Awesome alumni that you have there are really going to do doing some great things. I want to thank you for taking the time and being with us here today on the social justice forums and uh, continue the work of imparting and impacting uh, our young people. Thank you so much, Tamika, for being with us. Thank you, Darren. It was great being with you. All righty. And we're going to take a quick break here on the social justice forums. Another guest coming up right after this.